Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. It's Monday, it's Tuesday, and it's 11 a.m. And you know what that means. It's young talents making way time. I'm Andrea Gabrielli, I'm your host, and this is the show where we want to talk about things that matters to Hawaii that, me, me, uh, that, that um, are important for our people and our future. But we want to do this with extraordinary guests, the students of our schools across the islands. So, and I, as I understand today, we're going to talk about bees and honeybees. And here today, welcome. This is uh, uh, Aubrey Davis from Sacred Hearts Academy. Welcome, Aubrey. Nice Hi. to have you here. It's great to be here. <laughs> and uh, as I understand, we also have someone else in our studio today hiding. And so we have the campus minister of Sacred Hearts Academy, Sister Catherine Miller. Hi, Sister. Nice to have you here as well. <laughs> so um, please raise your hands. Anybody who likes honey? <laughs> Me. <laughs> oh, today, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so th tell us more about um, Aubrey. So, um, which grade are you in? Um, I'm a tenth grader. Tenth grader, yeah. So, uh, let's begin our uh, our conversation today uh, by having you telling us uh, uh, something about uh, uh, what you're doing about um, uh, what you're doing at Sacred Hearts Academy, as well as uh, why you got interested in bees. Uh, uh, and why you started the science projects regarding honey and honeybees as well. Um, so I am a student. That's my current profession. Um, so one of my teachers, Ms. Kinga Voitas, um, she is the social studies, global issues, women's studies teacher at Sacred Hearts. And she came up to me one day asking me if I wanted to participate in this competition called Global Natural History Day. And I'm, I was excited, like that's, I do all types of things like that because I love school and I love my education. So I was like, why not, right? And so Global Natural History was based on a specific, you pick a global issue and you research it with a partner. But I was, I ended up doing it um, solo. I took a trip to China. Is this competition a Hawaii competition? Yes, okay. so this was Global Natural History Day, it was their second year in Hawaii. Yeah. Um, they do not have it on the mainland. They only have it here. It's but only they, local, yeah. Yes, but they did want to expand it nationally, but um, unfortunately the program is not gonna be continued this year. But um, Mr. Christopher Choi, um, he's starting his own program called Lab, Learning Across Borders, and that is just like GNHD. Um, it's the same concept but it's his own type of organization now, which I will be participating in again this year, and it's gonna be held in Vietnam. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you get to travel, you get to do research, you, go, you, you, you got to do what you enjoy. And so let's jump um, into uh, more what's what like um, um, your future plans as well. Um, after you said you are a 10th grader, after uh, you will graduate with high school, uh, what um, would you like to do? Would you like to continue staying in the sciences, carrying on this um, research as well? Uh, what's, so tell us more about, we're curious, we are at, uh, at FinTech here, we're curious about your future and your great ideas and success. Um, most definitely. Um, I do have two years left, but I'm pretty set on going to the mainland and I will be studying something in the sciences. Um, some sort of biology, um, either it be medical or if I do environmental science with bees. Um, but if I do go to the mainland, I kind of want to stay more on the west coast. But are you and coming back? I will come back. Good, yes, because we need you here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Hawaii. It's, it's my home. Like I've been here yeah. forever and I can't. I mean, I will go to the mainland for college, but I feel like I wouldn't be able to live there. Like, I'm always going to have to find my way back, you know, because it's my home. <laughs> yes. And um, bees in Hawaii. Yes. So I'm curious. Let, maybe um, um, let's have a, 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 our first slide up so we can see 
uh, something more. Oh, oh okay, so, uh, so these are our friends, right? Yes, <laughs> of course. So you may not, a lot of people don't think like, oh, they think bees, they think they sting me. They like, they try to intentionally harm me, but it's totally not true. Like bees, like it's, their stingers are their defensive mechanisms. And whenever they feel threatened, that's when they sting. But then we always relate stinging to bees and we never relate their importance that they have due to their like pollination processes that they do because they pollinate like bees, fun fact, um, they're responsible for 35% of our world's agricultural crop production. So they're responsible for pollinating fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, coffee beans. Coffee so, beans as well, which we have on the uh, western coast of the Big Island, all the coffee farms and everything. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing, like, so Hawaii brings in $212 million. Is it million or is it billion? I think it's million, I'm pretty sure. Million <laughs> dollars a year off of bee pollination. And Hawaii's proudest aspect is queen bee production. So Hawaii is titled as the place where they produce queen bees. And that's really, really important because a queen bee is the leader of a hive, right? So the hive, um, basically, what kind of bees do you have? So I, uh, there is the queen, yes. and then there are, I assume, as the queen, I mean, the queen doesn't do all the job, mm -hmm. <laughs> producing honey as well. So what kind of other, uh, how is uh, the, the hive, how is it organized? Uh, what, what happens in there? So you have the queen, and the queen is like the top, and you have drones, and you have worker bees. So the worker bees are the ones that deal with all like honey production, like they kind of help everything like run smoothly in the hive, and the drones are usually, which are usually male, they're the ones that mate with the queen, and that's how you produce Eggs more bees. And more bees. <laughs> yes. And, so, yeah. And so uh, the workers, basically, how do they produce honey? They go out, and so they look for flowers, they choose the, the sweet ones, and mm -hmm. how does it actually, they get the nectars, how does mm -hmm. it? So when you, they go out and they get the nectar, and then they just come back in and then, you know, they do like their process of like honey production. And that's how, and then they leave, leave it. Like, you know, when you see a honeybee hive and you think honeybee combs and that's where they store all like their honey. Like if you watch the bee movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's totally, it's totally accurate, the bee movie. Really. So um, that's, uh, um, so um, let's um, um, have our second slide up so we can see. Um, so this is what basically, uh, this looks like a field. We have some flowers here. And uh, we mentioned about the importance of bees for pollination purposes. So uh, the bees are the main factors that, um, you know, pollinate flowers, as we said, and guarantee food productions as well. Uh, what would happen if there were no more bees, for example? So I want to just touch up on the, like, the thing that bees are not the only pollinators. I mean, there are like butterflies, moths, you know, rodents, those type of things. And a lot of people would ask the question like, hey, if bees disappear, someone else is going to pick up the slack. Another pollinator will pick up the slack. But bees are like the most, they contribute most to... Well, that's why they are important then, because they contribute why. the most, okay. Yes, so that's why we don't want to neglect the fact that there are other pollinators out there, but bees are just responsible. They take a main role in the pollination processes that occur throughout the world. Like, the U.S. makes $24 billion off of bee pollination, and of that $24 billion, bees are responsible for 15 so, you know, if you do the math, 15 over 24, that's a great portion. That's more great than portion, yeah. that's more than half that bees are responsible for. And we can think, oh, um, yeah, sure, butterflies. If bees are gone, butterflies will pick up the slack. But will they really? Because when you think about it, bees, like, when they're gone, they won't, we won't have honey. That's, that's a major thing, right? And honey is also good for our health, exactly. health purposes as exactly. well. It's some sort of... Um, natural antibiotics as exactly. uh, important, yeah. That's why we use it in cough medicines or you use it in like hair care products because it helps your scalp. Right. It's just a natural remedy to like soothe your throat if you're like sick. And it's like bees are responsible for the production of honey, but they're also responsible for, as I said, like 
um, fruits and vegetables, and they pollinate cotton fibers too. And cotton's one of the main clothing items that we use in the clothing industry. And so yeah. we can actually make a point here and say that bees are actually worth, um, if not uh, even billions of dollars, because all these industries are related to um, you know, their health, basically. So it's important to um, keep them healthy. Exactly. Like, for example, um, the dairy industry, right? We get dairy from, you know, cows. Cows, for example, right? right? They produce milk. And cows eat, like, 100 pounds of food a day. And it's mainly only alfalfa hay. And alfalfa hay is pollinated by bees. So when you think about it, if no bees, no alfalfa hay, how are cows going to eat 100 pounds a day. Right. We mentioned about um, so the importance of bees, the importance of bees in Hawaii and for economy as well. Um, what's, maybe we have a slide, I believe, where we're showing a trend. There is a, a figure that we brought, uh, which we're basic, where we're basically showing, um, oh, I think here it is, uh, the number of colonies mm -hmm. in the United States uh, basically across from 1975 to 2010. I see a sharp decline. Oh, most definitely. Like, I think it's because like a lot of the time we don't technically think about bees because they're like these two little centimeter insects that just seem Tiny to and we don't... buzz and sting all the time, but they actually have a greater importance that I didn't even know until I actually researched about it. And it tells you that at this current rate, by the year 2035, we might not even have any bees left. So um, your projects, uh, your science projects at Sacred Hearts Academy brought you uh, to China as well for an award that you won. Yes. Um, and also, um, you were mentioning something about what we can do actually to prevent uh, this decline and try and recover the populations of bees. What are some of the remedies that people can, you know, do to try and, and, and sort of change this trend line which we had a look at? So there are a lot of things that we can do, um, or there's a, also a lot of things that are being done. Um, so there's a lot, of, a lot of countries have partaken in a bee conservation project of some sort. Like North America has like this North American pollinator protection campaign type of thing. Um, and what I found really interesting and what I really liked, because I feel like that's something that is really easy and that we can incorporate in both public and private schools here on the island, is um, Southern Oregon University and Bee City USA um, launched a program um, in April of 2015 called, uh, it's like a Bee Campus USA program where they have like, they practice like sustainable farming and planting like more a variety of plants on like college campuses that will contribute to bringing bees back to the environment because a lot back of to it, places where maybe yes. they were there but then they gone yeah they, yes. they went yeah because there has been studies shown that once they did plant like a diverse amount of crops in a certain area the bee population like it returned like bees came back so they like if if i understand correctly they like a variety of crops to choose from. So they can choose different flowers, different plants. So variety is important. Variety is important. And that's what I feel like, because, well, what I think is that if we have public and private schools maybe donate some sort of like area or dedicate some sort of area where we can, well, as you generically say, plant more gardens, right? If you plant different types of plants somewhere, it will, it will bring them contribute, back. yeah, it will contribute to bringing the bee population back to an area that they may, couldn't believe they could live in because it wasn't as sustainable as it was before. Because we know that there's, we live in a state where we're, we're building more buildings and things are becoming more industrialized, but we have to also realize the importance of our agriculture. Right. And this is uh, um, what we're learning from Audrey Davis about bees here at FinTech Hawaii. 
But now it's time to go and get some honey and we're gonna take a break and we're gonna, back, we're gonna be back soon. That's you. I want to know, will you watch my show? I hope you do. It's on Tuesdays at one o'clock and it's out of the comfort zone and I'll be your host, R.B. Kelly. See you there. We're back, we're live, we're here. This is FinTech Hawaii, Young Talents Making Way. And we had our dose, daily dose of honey today. <laughs> And we have here today um, Aubrey Davis, who is talking about um, um, her research as a student um, at um, Sacred Hearts Academy regarding honey production and bees. And so, um, so uh, we talked about uh, the importance economically of bees. So the, the importance of pollinations for currants, uh, for various crops. We mentioned the coffee um, on the, in Kona. But we also said that the population of bees around the world, as well as in Hawaii, is declining. Um, your research, your um, project, science projects um, in high school brought you to China. Yes, it did. Uh, can you tell us something? Uh, so how was that, you know, traveling for research? Uh, what uh, stories, uh, uh, what experiences as well did you bring back from your trip to China? What did you learn? Um, so going to China was my first time outside the country. Um, so my parents were a little worried about sending me away, but I was with my teacher and it was really great because I did have other students from Hawaii who did come with me. But when I did go there, I also met other students from Hong Kong, like different parts of China, because this program was centered in China. And we- Why China? Why China? Well, Mr. Mr. Baring, who founded or is responsible for Supporting financially GNHD, um, I think his like its home base is in China. So they were they had the competition in different areas of China every year. So I think it was they just wanted it to be centered in China. Right. But but yes. you, you you were also mentioning that in China they had a serious problems uh, with uh, population decline extreme at, at, the, at the point where no more bees were there in, in a region. Yeah, is that where you went? Um, I went to Chongqing, so I did not go to Suchan. The Suchan province, um, they lost all their bees already, and a lot of the farmers had to result to hand pollination. And hand pollination is a really, really time-consuming process. Because, Sounds like yeah. you have to go to every single flower, exactly. every single, yeah. But it, it might be difficult though because like 10 to 20 years from now, um, China's experiencing like people are becoming less farmers and moving to the city to find jobs. And with less farmers, then who's gonna be able to continue the hand pollination process and try to keep our plants from disappearing? And all these people, you know, moving to industry and doing jobs in the city, they still have to eat somehow. Exactly. So, yeah, so that's, um, um, so your trip, uh, you went there and you, uh, this was a company. So you won the competition in Hawaii. And then with the students as well, you went to China to basically continue the competition. So how was this experience then? Um, it was really great, partially because, um, well, mainly because I did get to go to a different country to continue and present about my research that I did, which is kind of amazing to actually research and go somewhere else to talk about it, especially when you come from... We're, we're seeing some pictures yeah. here. Yeah, can that's you make me. some comments? Um, so that's my, I did a, I constructed a honeybee. It looks like, like a hive, yeah? Yeah, a honeybee <laughs> hive. It has like the different cones 
And it's rotating actually, so it's a rotating exhibit. Oh, so the structure basically rotates? Yes. And people can, so people don't need to go around and to mm -hmm. read it, it turns, okay, yeah. So when I did present um, about my issue about bees, um, I was able to, you know, turn my display and focus um, the judge's attention on a specific type of honeycomb to focus on. So this was uh, um, in China, uh, you learned about this, uh, what really happens uh, if bees are not, uh, um, are gone basically, if they're not present anymore. How is the, the, the situation with the population as well as hives, the number of hives here in the state of Hawaii? So Hawaii, um, luckily we don't experience or we don't have as much of a problem as other places do. Like yes, we do have problems, but we also help um, contribute to so because we have or where we have a pretty sustainable population of bees here we ship our hives to California for example because California um, like bees pollinate nuts right and California heavily depends on almond crop production yeah, almonds, yeah, yeah. especially during this month February and March so from Hawaii we ship a lot of our um, beehives commercial beekeeping to California to help sustain their almond crop production. And we bring them back afterwards. Of course, of course, <laughs> we need to. And uh, um, so, um, so bees are particularly important for human, for, for people, basically for food production economy. Um, if I were to uh, basically grow a garden here in Hawaii and try to plant more plants, more flowers that be uh, would enjoy, so to attract bees to my garden and, and bring them there. Um, what kind of plants would I, so you mentioned variety before, is that right? So what kind of? Um... Um, it can technically be anything, I believe, because you, if you, as long as you have diversity, like if it's a plant that has like nectar and it's really, really sweet, bees are going to be attracted to it no matter what, no matter if it's sunflower or if it's like plumerias or whatever type of like agriculture that we have here or that's available as long as they're all different in some sort of way then bees will come and be attracted to it like a main problem is monoculture farms so when we plant like one of the same type of crop bees won't want to come because they're so used to like it's like eating the same thing every day like if you ate a hamburger every single day you eventually you, get you, sick of it yeah right you want hamburgers and pizza and kalu pig and, like, and, and peach and vegetables as exactly. well exactly <laughs> because like us bees need nutrients too and a lot of it is when they suffer from malnutrition that's one way that their population declines so, um, Aubrey, thank you for your time here. Thank you for coming mm -hmm. over. The last question that I would like to ask you, uh, can you summarize uh, for our viewers uh, uh, so what we said, basically, the importance of bees, uh, and so why here in Hawaii we care about bees and we want them to thrive and we want growing population? So, Hawaii's economy is mainly based on the macadamia nut industry and our growing coffee industry, which is starting to compete with other countries all the way up there. Like we heavily depend on macadamia and coffee. Those are our two crops that we produce solely here. And bees are responsible for pollinating both of those things. They pollinate the macadamia nuts and they pollinate the coffee beans. The Kona so, coffee, yeah. Ex exactly. And without bees, yes, there are other pollinators, but they are not as, I'm not going to say as important because they are, but they aren't as responsible for the job that bees do because bees have done it so efficiently all these years. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Aubrey. Thank you for being here. You've been watching FinTech Hawaii, Young Talents Making Way. Uh, I'm Andrea Gabrieli. I'm your host. It's been a pleasure today, and I'm going to see you all on next Tuesday, not Monday, as I said at the beginning, <laughs> at 11 a.m. Thank you. Aloha. <laughs>